this video, we'll talk about CPA security. So CPA stands for chosen plain text attack. So this means we want to know if an encryption scheme is secure against chosen plain text attacks. So let's say we have a public key encrypt crypto system, so public key encryption, you can think for instance of RSA or something like that. <clears throat> and now, well, let's assume we have Alice who wants to send a message to Bob. She encrypt encrypts it with Bob's public key PK. This belongs to Bob and she sends several messages and Bob can <clears throat> decrypt it using his oops using his secret key SK. And now let's assume E intercepts the message messages and wants to know uh, what the plain text messages MIR. And so this here is the encryption with Bob, Bob, Bob's public key. So let's make an informal definition of CPA security. So this is a game form. So it's about, let's say, Eve and Bob play a game. And yeah, it's about who wins and the probability of winning. So at first Eve gets encryptions of arbitrary or of, let's say, any message she wants and this is in the public key setting fairly easy because Bob's public key is public so Eve knows the public key and she can just encrypt the message she wants and then Eve chooses two messages M0 and M1 and she sends them to Bob. Now Bob randomly chooses a bit so B in 0, 01 he encrypts MB, maybe let me write it so, he encrypts with his public key MB and he sends this to Eve. Okay, now what's Eve's goal? So Eve wants to know whether it's Pop has encrypted uh, M naught or M1. So Eve guesses whether Bob has encrypted M naught or M not or M1 and if let's say returns bit B prime and now it's about the probability that B is equal to B prime. So if 
this probability is let's say less than a half so if she is plus something negligible I won't go into details here what this means but so in essence this means if Eve um, if Eve's chance that b prime is equal to b is essentially a half so if she just guesses randomly um, so if this is not better not better than random guessing um, then the encryption scheme is CPA secure. So let's at first think about whether there exists a CPA secure encryption scheme because one could think well Eve can get encryption of any message she wants. So if she just gets encryptions of M0 and M1 and Bob encrypts it then and sends it to Eve, then what could Eve do? She could compare what Bob has sent and she can um, she can just check whether it's equal to her encryption of M0 and M1 or not. And if it's equal then equal to M0, the encryption of M0, then she knows B is equal to zero and otherwise it's one. So but this assumes that the encryption scheme is deterministic. So no deterministic encryption scheme is CPA secure. So that's the first important lesson and maybe I should also um, write here then that in step 4 Eve in principle could also oops, she can also get again encryptions of any message she wants. Okay, so the trick to get a CPA secure encryption scheme is that Bob uses some randomness here and so that his encryption differs from Eve's encryption of these mess messages and then indeed there exist CPA secure encryption schemes so you can for instance look up the uh, oops was, what did I write here El Gamal encryption scheme you can look this up and this is an example of a CPA secure encryption scheme okay but now let's go on and let's see why do we want to have CPA security? Because, well, this is some strange definition. We have this game between Eve and Bob, and, well, it's about who wins the game and if Eve can do better than random guessing. So let's look at some scenario where we can get uh, where we can see where it might be helpful to have CPA security. So let's or where at least um, deterministic encryption might be in a bad position. So let's assume Alice wants 
to send a long message to Bob. So she has to split it because she can't encrypt uh, messages of arbitrary length, but just of some, there's some upper bound of the length, what you can encrypt. So she has to split it into several messages. Let's say m1 up to mn. And now she sends the encryptions of these um, messages. Let's maybe for simplicity call these c1 up to cn, so the ciphertext. And now let's assume if, well, let's at first assume the messages have all 128 bits, just let's just assume it, it's not that important, I don't know. Well, in the RSA setting, one has to encode somehow the numbers into bits and I don't know what would be a reasonable length for the messages, but yeah, let's just assume it's 128. And now let's assume Eve knows the first 80 bits of M1. So for instance, she knows that, I don't know, Alice has sent hello Bob as in the beginning. So she knows the beginning of the first message. And now what can Eve do? So she can guess the last 48 bits and check um, and now she can encrypt the resulting message and she checks checks whether the encryption of this message whether it is equal to C1. So we assume now that our encryption scheme is deterministic. So we want to know she wants she knows the first 80 bits she guesses the last 48 bits encrypts the whole thing and checks whether it's equal to c1 and to get the right last bits she needs at most 2 to the 48 guesses. And now let's, um, well, if she's lucky, so after these many guesses, she knows um, the right first message. And if she's lucky, maybe she can infer something from the text of the first message, how it, the first message goes on, something about the second message as well. And so maybe again 80 bits, maybe less, maybe more. And then she can do the same again, again and again, maybe if she depends on what she can infer from the first message. And this reduces the complexity of the attack again. So if we assume, for instance, that she in this way can get always the first 80 bits of any message iteratively, she needs at most n times 2 to the 38, 48 um, guesses, and that's doable. Whereas if she was, if she would just guess randomly, then we would have 
<coughs> n times 2 to the 128 and that's not doable at least if you're not some kind of nation state or anything like that okay so that's that shows why we don't want to have um, deterministic encryption and now in fact CPA security formalizes this that even if um, she knows C1 she can't and she encrypts this message where she knows the first 80 bits and guesses the last 48 bits she doesn't know whether her encryption encrypts the same thing as did the encryption of Alice so she can't guess the last well she can guess it but she never knows whether she is right about the last 48 bits and so in this scenario she can't go on to try to crack the other encryptions apart from chance but chance won't help her much because it's um, yeah it's far too hard okay so thanks for listening i guess in the next video we'll talk a little bit about symmetric encryption and uh, cbc mode for symmetric encryption um, the definition of cpa security is in the symmetric case similar the only difference is that Eve gets encryptions here and also here but this now is really an assumption because in the public key setting Eve trivially gets encryptions because she knows Bob's public key but in the symmetric case she doesn't know this so she the definition is quite similar but it has yeah there's a difference about how easy in a symmetric key encryption setting this assumption may be even stronger than it's in the real world whereas in the public key encryption Eve definitely can get encryptions of any message she wants. Okay, so thanks for listening. Have a good day and bye.